So there's been this attempt to intellectualize Trump. There are all these people, Henry Olson over at the Manhattan Institute and, and a variety of Selena Zito, a lot of people trying to wrap a sort of intellectual veneer around what it is about Trump that is so appealing. There's only one thing about President Trump that is so appealing, and it is an appealing thing, and it's that he punches people, right? What, what is appealing about President Trump, everybody knows this on a gut level, is that President Trump is a fighter, right? This was the he fights thing during 2016. And as I said, during 2016, he is a hammer in search of a nail. Sometimes he hits a nail, sometimes he hits a baby. To understand why that's so appealing to the Republican base, you have to understand that this was a missing portion of the Republican soul for years and years and years and years. Okay, Trump won the primaries because he was by far the most aggressive, no holds barred candidate. There's just no question about it. Republican primary voters figured that he would do to Hillary Clinton what he did to Jeb Bush, namely manhandle her and then throw her through a wall, which is what he did to Jeb Bush. And they weren't totally wrong about that, right? Trump in the debates. I remember watching the primary debates and thinking to myself, you know, it would be really amusing to see Trump on stage with Hillary, right? Didn't everybody think that? Didn't everybody think this would make great TV and he would just hit her with the kitchen sink? That it wouldn't matter. He, he would bring up Juanita Broderick in debate that he'd be the kind of guy who'd bring up anything. And he did. He fulfilled his promise, right? So he pile drove Hillary Clinton after pile driving Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz and brutalizing Jeb Bush. What's more, backing Trump in the Republican in the Republican primaries and in the general election, lent voters a sense that they were in the fight. You have to understand, I think 2012 actually broke the country in a lot of ways. After Mitt Romney, who was the cleanest candidate in the history of American politics, was destroyed by Barack Obama and the Democrat media complex, as Andrew Breitbart called it. After the Democrats turned that clean candidate into a sexist who wanted to put women in binders and put black people back in chains and forcibly cut gay kids' hair and stick dogs on the top of cars, Republican voters basically went full Sean Connery in The Untouchables. Remember the famous scene in The Untouchables where Sean Connery is sitting there, he's, he's Malone, he's sitting there next to Elliot Ness, played by Kevin Costner, and Sean Connery says to him, what are you prepared to do? He says, what are you prepared to do? And then he says, if you really want to fight this thing, right, they pull a knife, you pull a gun, he sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue, right? You remember that whole spiel? That's how Republicans felt after 2012. They felt like, okay, now we're in a knife fight, so let's bring a gun. Trump is the knife and the morgue, and all of the consequences for bad democratic action wrapped up into one giant orange package of id, right? That was, the, that was what Trump was, and that's what Trump still is. And so the Republican base began asking its politicians the same question that Sean Connery asked, right? What are you prepared to do, right? That was, that's the question that everybody is asking Tim Paul Lenti and every Republican primary c candidate. And if they're not willing to defend Trump, people take that as a lack of courage. In fact, the worse things Trump says or does, the more the primary base sees it as a mark of courage to defend him, right? This is the weird counterintuitive logic is that if Trump does something really bad, really polarizing, and somebody on the left criticizes him, the question is, you want Trump to win, don't you? You want the left to lose, don't you? So if you really had any balls, you'd actually just support what Trump just said, right? If it turns out that there is an N-word tape and people say, well, I'm not gonna go along with Trump on that, there will be a large portion of the Republican base who will say, how dare you not go along with Trump on that? Not because they love the N-word, but just because everything is a what are you prepared to do test. Everything is a do you have the stones to stand up with the man who defeated Hillary Clinton? Do you have the courage to stand up with the man who saved America? Right. No matter what Trump does, it's become now a test not of Trump, but of the people who are willing to support him. Because the question is, what are you prepared to do? Are you prepared to send people to the morgue? Are you prepared to use a gun? Now, Trump could make all of this easy by just not doing that stuff, right? If he just didn't do that stuff, then the loyalty test would be easy because you could be loyal to good principle and also be loyal to President Trump and you wouldn't have to criticize him. Everything would be hunky-dory. But that's not what Trump does. That's not what Trump does. Every black mark on his record becomes a sort of referendum, not on Trump, but on all of the other candidates who are out there. And the problem is there are two sides to this equation. It's not just Republican primary voters who are voting in elections, folks. Every time Trump does something bad and the Republican base says, what are you prepared to do to defend this guy? The Democratic base is willing to show up in twice the numbers. Okay, so this is why it's imperative that Trump not actually force the choice. It's why it's imperative that Trump not actually force the choice. But it is important to recognize that Trump is filling a gap that the Republican Party left. Trump did expose a crack in the Republican political facade, which was an unwillingness to challenge prevailing political norms. Right? He would go out there and he would say politically incorrect things, some of which were true. Some of it was just him being a jackass, but some of that stuff was true. And a lot of people said, Okay, well, he's at least willing to, I mean, he drove right through that thing, like a, through political correctness, like a, like a truck driving through a plate glass window. And a lot of people on the right resonated to that. And then they say, okay, well, what are you willing to do to maintain the shattering of that glass? Because good that that glass was shattered. 
And if the answer is that you're not willing to go along with whatever silly thing Trump did today, well, then that means that you're not loyal enough. That is why Trump has become such a litmus test. Now, is there an answer for conservatives who don't actually back some of the stuff that Trump says or does? Yes, there is. The answer is the same as it was before Trump was ever on the scene. And that is you actually have to show that there is some fight in the dog. You actually have to show that you are willing to step up and battle the left with just as much alacrity as President Trump has battled the left. You have to show that you are willing to go in, you're willing to go to political war with people on the left in favor of conservative principles, not just to go to war with the left, but you have to show that you are willing to step onto the battlefield and punch somebody in the mouth rhetorically if they deserve it. You have to show that you're in the fight. The, big, the reason Trump exists is because the Republicans didn't feel like they were in the fight. Trump came along, he felt like he was in the fight, and now everything he does is a referendum on whether you are in the fight or not. The other way to do this is that you have to independently show that you're in the fight. You can't wait for the president to lead. You can't be conciliatory. You can't go around pretending that, that the left isn't a threat to the American way of life. You actually have to go out and fight yourself. If you're an independent fighter, you can get away with this stuff. But the perception cannot be the perception cannot be that you are harsher on President Trump than you are on the left and that you are willing to undercut President Trump because you want strange new respect from folks who are on the other side of the aisle. That's what happened in Minnesota last night. That's why Trump has become a litmus test for so much of the Republican base. And that's why the best move here is for President Trump to stop making silly mistakes, for the base to recognize that sometimes President Trump makes silly mistakes, and for the base to be intellectually honest enough to recognize that when a politician criticizes President Trump, it's not because that politician wants President Trump to lose or the conservative agenda to lose. Maybe they're criticizing him because he did something wrong.